everybody, it's Michael. I'm back again with another walkthrough video and today I'd like to show you Great Western Trail. Great Western Trail is by designer Alexander Pfister. It's for two to four players, ages 12 and up, and it takes between 75 and 150 minutes. The version I have here is the English one by Stronghold Games. The German one is by Eggerspiele, but there are many, many other versions out in many different languages, although the game itself is language independent. Great Western Trail debuted about two years ago, and I'd argue that it has aged very well. It's number 10 currently on Board Game Geek. The first expansion is coming to stores around this time, so it's a very successful and very popular game. Now, since a lot has already been said about this game and there are many other playthroughs, I've decided to show you so called expert rules. The rules you're supposed to use once you've well, played a couple of games and you're experienced. And I have to admit that I'm maybe not as experienced as I should be when playing with the experienced rules, but more about that after the walkthrough. Thematically, the game is of course set in the American West. Players are cattle barons, hiring cowboys, engineers and craftsmen to build buildings, advance their railroad network and buy cows. Mechanically, this is a game that somehow defies categorization. There is engine building, there is movement around the map, there's a fair amount of what you could call deck building. Well, it's just a mix of different mechanics. As I already mentioned, a lot has already been said about this game, so what I would like to do now is show you a full three-player game. Enjoy! Okay, I've set up a three-player game, and as always, let's take a brief look at the components first, starting with the board in the middle. The board is basically the Great Western Trail. Our cattlemen start down here, and up here is Kansas City, where we're trying to get, and also each player has an engine in Kansas City. The board has been initially seeded with neutral buildings. There are seven of those. And for your first game, it's recommended that each building with a specific letter, C in this case, also goes on the space labeled C. But since this video is supposed to show an advanced game, I've simply randomized those seven neutral buildings. Also, we've seeded the board with seven of these tiles from the one stack. And we ended up with four tippy tiles and three hazard tiles, one of each of the three different hazards. Flood, Drought and Rock Slide. Also we've seeded the job market with five people to hire. This over here is the job market token which will determine the pace of the game. Once it leaves the board down here the game will be over. And finally we've seeded these forecast or foresight spaces with tiles 1, 2 and 3 from their respective stacks. Then over here we have a display of objectives. Down here is the cattle market with its deck. Then we have a supply of money. And finally, each of the players has their own display. They have the player board with lots of discs covering special abilities and bonuses. And during the course of the game, they will try to place these discs on the board, thus unlocking those bonuses and special abilities. Then over here is a certificate track where each player starts at zero. Each player has their personal deck of cattle cards and actually starts with a hand of four. Each player has a starting objective, starting money. Since blue will be the starting player, he starts with six money. Yellow has seven, red has eight. And finally, each player has a set of 10 personal buildings that they can build. And each building comes with an A and a B side. In your first game, you're supposed to use all the A sides, but in every game thereafter, you can determine randomly whether you have A or B up for each building. But the important thing is that each player uses the same buildings. And then we can already start the game. To give you a bit more of an insight what we're doing, this is the herd deck, that's the actual proper name. And this is our current hand. So we've got two gray ones, one black two and one green two. And the thing is, when you arrive at Kansas City, you want to have a hand of unique cards. Because each specific card will only count once. So right now, this hand would have a herd value of five, two plus one plus two, because only one of the one actually counts. So what you're actually trying to do is optimize your hand while getting over to Kansas City, but also, and this is where this game has a deck building element, 
you're trying to improve the value of your overall herd deck by getting additional cards. So you're more likely to actually get better hands with the threes, fours and fives in them. In your turn will have three steps, A, B and C. And in step A, you can move your cattleman up to three spaces. Although in the very first round, you can actually decide where you start. Then after you've moved up to three spaces, you can do an action on the space you arrived. And depending on whether it's a neutral building or your own building or someone else's building or even Kansas City, you will have different options. And then finally in step C, you'll refill your hands up to four. And blue actually decides to start up here. As said before, on your first turn, you can start on any neutral building you like. You're not actually moving. Whenever you've arrived on a space with a neutral building, you can either do its specific action or a so-called auxiliary action, but usually you want to do the specific action of the building. And actually each building has usually more than one action, and those are separated by these vertical lines. And you get to do as many of those actions as you like. And the first action actually gives you an option because it has a diagonal line and here you have to choose. So basically we're choosing one of these two things as the first action and then we're getting the second action. Here our choice is to either pick up a tippy tile or to pay two dollars to move our engine up ahead two spaces. And since our objective says that we want to collect one blue tippy tile, let's actually use this action. Now you can pick any tippy tile you want, but the thing is, depending on which one you pick up, you'll actually lose money or gain money. And since we want a blue tile anyway, we take this and make a dollar on top of it. So we take one dollar, as well as the tippy tile, just put it into our display. And basically we've managed to fulfill one third of this objective already. Then we can do an auxiliary action, which currently the state of the things we have unlocked is to either take one dollar or to draw a card and then discard a card. The second action sounds interesting because we actually have two ones we want to get rid of one of them, but actually we have other plans for these two ones. So we just take another dollar. And then finally, we'd refill our hands up to four cards, but since we didn't play one, we're already done. And so this was Blue's first turn. Yellow decides to start on this space. So first he can either take an objective or advance his certificate mark by one. He decides to do that and then he gets to advance his engine for each of his engineers. So we have to take a look at the section on the board where we store all of our workers. And as we can see, we start with one of each of the different workers, cowboys, craftsmen and engineers. So basically yellow has one engineer. So he gets to advance his engine one space and that's already his first turn. Again, he doesn't draw a card because he didn't play one. Red decides to start over here, so he gets to advance his engine by one space as well. And the thing is, on each base there can only be one engine, so basically he'll skip that one and end up on space number two. And then he can also perform an auxiliary action, so he also takes a dollar. Then it's Blue's turn. He can move up to three spaces, although only spaces with an actual cardboard piece on them count. So basically he could move one, two, three spaces all the way over here. And as you can see, at certain points the path will fork. So from here on you can decide to move this way or to take a detour or even take a bigger detour down here. But he actually wants to move over here. On this space he can discard a black two to get two money. He actually decides to do that. So it goes to his personal discard pile and he gets two money. And then he can go to the cattle market. The actions that you can perform in the cattle market depend on your number of cowboys. He only has one, the one he started with. And for one cowboy, you can either buy a brown four for 12, which he doesn't have, or you can buy a three for six. So it says take blue three. It also goes into his discard pile, and that'll cost him six. He had one cowboy and he basically spent that cowboy for this action, so even if he had more money, he couldn't do anything else. If you have two cowboys, then you can either buy one three for only three or one five for twelve, or for example, two threes for a total of twelve, because each one will still cost you six. And the market is not refilled. And then finally, blue has to draw back up to four, and it draws a white two. Yellow decides to take it slow, just move mount space. Any number of cattlemen can be on one space. So first of all, he gets to advance his engine by one. Again, leapfrogging over red. And as an auxiliary action, he also decides to take one dollar. And again, he doesn't refill his hand. Red moves up here. Decides to pay two coins to advance his engine by two spaces. One, 
And then he has a choice to make. He can either go over here directly to the five or he can take a little detour to the station down here. And whenever you stop at a station, you can upgrade that station if you haven't already done so. And he decides to do it. It'll cost him another two of his coins. But he can place a disc there. This has two effects. It'll be one point at the end of the game and two. By taking one of his discs off of his player board, he'll unlock a bonus. Now, since this is a white space, he can only take discs from white spaces. So he can't take this one, he can't take these ones, he can't take this one down here. And he decides to take this one. Now, he could also install a so-called station master in this space, but that would have to be one of his workers. And right now he doesn't have any because these are printed on. What exactly does this do? You'll see in a second. Because as a second action he can take an auxiliary action and actually these are double auxiliary actions. So when you have an auxiliary action for which you have unlocked both spaces, you can actually get this bonus twice. So up until now, whenever we use these double auxiliary actions, we will only perform one half of it basically, so a single one, because we haven't unlocked anything. But basically, by using this double auxiliary action, you can now make two coins. And again, he doesn't have to refill his hand. Blue moves over here. Here he can discard two cattle cards of the same kind to get four coins. So it's to discard his two ones. And then he can pick up a hazard tile for seven. And while he's actually interested in picking up hazard tiles, he only has eight money left. So he decides to let it be and simply draw back up to four cards. And now his hand looks like this. So right now this would be a breeding value of six. Yellow decides to move over here and also pay two to advance his engine by two spaces. Now he cannot go to the station down here because that space is occupied, so he simply moves one, two. He gets to take an auxiliary action. So once again, he takes a coin. Red goes down here to the cattle market. He has a black card to discard. So he gets two coins. He has one cowboy, so he decides to pick up a red three for six. And that actually helps him with his objective because he needs to have one three at the end of the game. And then he draws another card. Blue moves over here, where he can discard a green two for two. He has one. And then he can build one of his private buildings. And the thing is that each of them has a minimum requirement of craftsmen. Again, he only starts with one. Basically, he can build either this one or this one. And he decides to go with this one. Now, he can put it anywhere on the board. But the thing is, he would actually like to activate it on his way to Kansas City. So he decides to put it right here. And then he has to pay it. And basically, for each craftsman that the building required, he has to pay two coins. So two coins because it only required one craftsman. And then he refills his hand. He's still at breeding value of six because now he has double black two. Yellow also moves over here, discards a black two, gets two coins, and down at the cattle market he also decides to get a red three for six. And he refills his hand. Red moves over here, discards two ones for four, and is not interested in picking up a hazard tile. Now blue moves over to his private building. He can use its actions. He's a bit unlucky though, because he could discard a one to move his engine up ahead one space, but unfortunately he didn't draw one. But the second action will allow him to discard a green two for three, so he does at least that. Yellow moves over here, discards two white twos for four. Not the best deal in the world, but he needs the money. He's also not interested in picking up a hazard tile. Red moves over here. Decides to discard a card and he gets two money and also gets a better building. He decides to build this one, put it over here, and that'll also cost him two. Blue moves over here. He can discard a white two for two coins. He decides to do that. And then he can hire up to two people from the job market. The first one for its normal price, the second one for two more than the normal asking price. In the job market, you can only hire from the row where the job market token isn't, so basically only from this top row here. And here we have two engineers and one craftsman available, and each of them will cost six. For his first action, he decides to take an engineer for six, because he has to advance his engine. It goes on here, but first let's pay the six coins. And here, 
it covers up a special ability that he can use immediately. He can discard a one card to advance his certificate marker. And he decides to do that. And now he could hire another person for an additional two. So if he had eight coins, which he doesn't, he could hire another worker, but right now he can't. Yeah, no moves over here. Decides to discard a green too. Also decides to build this building. And he places it over here. So again, you'll have a chance to actually move on there. It'll cost two. Red moves down here to his building. And here he simply gets two coins for each of his building in the forest. This one is in the, fo in the forest itself, so he simply collects two coins. Now blue, blue could either go directly to Kansas City, or he can take a stop at the yellow player's building. It doesn't cost him anything to stop here, and we'll see later when stopping at an opponent's building actually does cost something. And as an opponent's building, he can simply take a single auxiliary action, which will allow him to draw one card and then discard one. So he draws a card. That didn't do him any good because now he has two doubles, so it doesn't matter, he simply gets to discard one. Yellow decides to stop at the blue player's building for the exact same reason. He draws a card. And discards one, and that's his entire turn. The red player moves over here, discards a white two for two coins, and then decides to hire the craftsman from the shelf market, which will cost him six. Then on his turn, blue has to move into Kansas City, and then every year in Kansas City go through five steps. The first three are the foresight spaces. Basically, at each step you can choose one of the two tiles below and put it into play. Since blue is interested in gathering hazard tiles, probably makes sense for him to put out more. This is a drought, so it has to go on the next high space on the drought track here. Then next he can decide whether to put out an engineer or a cowboy. He actually opts for an engineer, so he moves down the chop mark and puts it here. And then finally he can decide between a tippy tile and a cowboy and he decides to take the tippy tile. Next, he has to calculate his income. Here, only unique cards count. Cards that are present in the hand more than once do not count. And you're allowed to add a number of your certificates. So let's take a look. Blue, unfortunately, has two currencies. So he only has a hand of six. He could decide to pay his one certificate to make that a seven. But he decides to keep the certificate. So we're looking at a value of six. He gets that in cash immediately. And he also needs to discard his entire hand. Let's keep the six over here for a while and we'll see in a second why that's the case. Because in step five, we actually have to deliver. Now, up here are different cities and each city has a value. Then to deliver to any city, you have to meet its value. So with a value of six, we can deliver in any city from Kansas City to Colorado Springs. The thing is, with the exception of Kansas City and later on San Francisco, you can only deliver once to each city. Also, if you deliver to certain cities that are next to each other, you get certain bonuses or negative effects. So for example, if you deliver to both Wichita and Colorado Springs, that's minus one at the end of the game. And finally, you have to pay. More specifically, for each of these red crosses that your engine has to cross to get to the city where you're delivering, you have to pay one dollar. So for example, if Blue was to deliver to Colorado Springs, since his engine is still back here, that would cost him an additional three. And Blue actually decides to pay those three dollars and deliver to Colorado Springs. So since Colorado Springs allows for this from a white space to be placed, similar to the train stations earlier, he decides to take the one that allows him to advance his engine by paying a coin. And then all that's left to do is move his cattleman back to the start of the track and to refill those spaces on the foresight track. And then finally he has to replenish his hand of course. He discarded all cards so he needs to draw four. There's two left in his draw pile so he has to reshuffle his discard pile and draw the remaining two. Yellow moves over to this building over here. He doesn't play a white card, but he likes to hire a worker. He takes this cowboy for six. Red could stop at the yellow player's building, but he decides to move to Kansas City immediately. Puts out the tippy. The craftsman. New workers always go to the row where the job marker is and with the column of the player count. So He's placed here and finally, oops, he decides to put out another 
cowboy. Then he reveals and discards his entire hand. He has four different cards, so they all count. That's a breeding value of seven. He doesn't have any certificates to offer, so he gets seven bucks. So basically he has the cho same choice as Blue did before. He decides to also deliver to Colorado Springs. He takes this token. And since his engine is down here, there's one cross between his engine and Colorado Springs. So he has to pay one. Okay, so this was this step, and then he moves down here, and we refill the four side spaces. Blue starts on the trail again, decides to go here. He has a choice between an objective card and a certificate. He takes a certificate, and then he can move his engine forward two spaces. So it's now entry two. Yellow decides to stop at his own building. He can discard a one. He does that. So it's not here. He does not discard a green two. So he simply goes back to four. Red moves over here. He decides to take one objective card. This one. Because he already has one station. The objective is simply put onto his discard pile. A new one is revealed. And then he gets to advance his engine by one space. Blue decides to move one space over here. So he gets to advance his engine by another two spaces. And he can perform a double auxiliary action. Unfortunately, he hasn't unlocked any one of those. So what he decides to do is perform this one as a single. He decides to pay one to advance his engine one space. So he actually ends up over here on the set. And finally, it's Yellow's turn to move into Kansas City. He has no choice here. He decides to put up a cowboy and a craftsman. Unfortunately, he only has a value of five, six, if he uses one of his certificates. So he also decides to deliver to Colorado Springs. That won't cost him anything because his engine is already there. And of course he draws a new hand. Red moves over here. He gets to advance his engine by one space. Again hopscotching all the way over here, but he decides to actually move down to the station. He can upgrade it. He decides to place this disc. And then what you can also do, which he hasn't done before, when you upgrade a station, you can assign a station master. For that, you need one actually hired character, not one that is printed on. He has one. I'm not sure whether this is the most clever play at this point, but on the other hand, I want to show it to you. So he decides to take this craftsman and install him as station master, which means he gets this special tile. It'll give him one permanent certificate, so from now on his breeding value will always be one higher in Kansas City. And also at the end of the game, for each pair of tippies, one blue one and one green, he'll get three points. He wants to get one pair anyway, so this is probably a nice combo. Then he has a double auxiliary reaction, so he decides to take two dollars back. Blue decides to move up here, then he has a choice of either trading with the Indians, which would give him two dollars and a green tippy. Or to pay two and advance his engine by two. He decides to do the latter. And then he can perform a double auxiliary reaction. So he simply decides to take a dollar. Yellow moves here, decides to get a certificate. And then he gets to advance his engine by one space. Red decides to trade with the Indians. So he picks up this tile and gets two dollars. And then as a double auxiliary action, he decides to draw two cards and put two, two back. Blue moves down here. He can discard a black two in order to gain two coins. And then he can go to the cattle market. He only has one cowboy and he doesn't have 12 coins. So his only option is to get a three, four, six. So he gets a whole steal. Yellow decides to catch up a little by moving two spaces. He decides to pay two to advance his engine by two. And then for the double auxiliary reaction, he simply takes one dollar. Red goes to the cattle market, discards a black Angus for two, and then he decides to pay 12 to get a West Highland, and he takes the one that is worth five victory points. 
And of course he draws back up to four. Blue moves over here. He can discard two jerseys for four dollars. And then he can pick our hazard tile for seven. And he decides to pick this one, which is worth four victory points. So he's also almost done with this objective. Yellow moves over here, sells a black angus for two. And since he has two cowboys, he can get a three for only three. And then he has to reshuffle. Red decides to skip this building, move over here. He can discard a green too, and then he can build a building. He only has one craftsman though. He decides to pick this one, which only costs one craftsman, puts it down here, and he's pay two coins. Blue also moves up here, sells this one for two, but then he decides to save his money and not build a building. Yellow would be interested in picking up a hazard tile due to his objective, but he doesn't have enough money and he doesn't have two equal cards, so he decides to skip ahead and catch up with the others. He discards a Dutch belt. He also only has one craftsman, so he actually decides to upgrade this building. It costs one craftsman, and since he only has one other, he can build any building that costs up to two craftsmen. He decides to get this one. Test it on the same spot, and then he simply pays the difference. The difference is one craftsman, so he has to pay two points. And then the tile that was replaced is removed from the game. Red moves down here into his private building. He gets two coins for each of his buildings in the forest, so two, four altogether. Blue moves into his private building. He can discard a jersey to advance his engine by one. He decides against going down to the station and simply moves over here. And then he can discard a green two for three dollars. Yellow decides to stop at Blue's building. It doesn't have a hand, so he doesn't have to pay anything. And then he decides to perform an auxiliary action to draw a card. And then discard one. Red heads over to the job market. He discards a white two for two coins. And then he decides to hire a cowboy for seven. Blue moves down here. Discards a two. And he decides to hire an engineer for six. No, actually he decides to hire a cowboy for seven. Then yellow moves down here as well. Discards a two, gets two coins, and decides to hire a craftsman for six. Red decides for a bit of an unorthodox move, because he stops at yellow's building. He also has to pay him one coin, but then he gets to perform a single auxiliary action, and he decides to take a card and discard one. But he drew his objective and he already discarded one card. Now he can either keep this in his hand, cycling it through his deck for the rest of the game, and then at the end of the game, if he has fulfilled the condition, he gets three points. If not, it doesn't matter, he just hasn't fulfilled it. The alternative is to play it now, because you can play objective cards whenever you just performed an action in phase B, and he just did that, to get the bonus up here, but then the card is played on the table, and then at the end of the game, if you can fulfill the objectives, you get three points. However, if you don't, you get minus two. But he decides to play this, it goes up here along with this other objective, and now he gets to draw up to three cards and discard the same amount. So he drew three, discarded three, and then at the end of his turn, he gets to replenish his hand. Blue decides to do the same. He also pays yellow coin, draws a card, and he's lucky because he can discard a black angus. And now he has four different cards. And finally yellow also stops at his own building. He does not have the necessary five coins to actually pick up a hazard tile, so he also decides to only do a single auxiliary reaction. And then of course he discards one card. Red has no other choice, he has to move to Kansas City. First he puts the tippy into play, then a cowboy, and then another cowboy. Then he reveals his entire hand. It's a total of nine. He does not have any certificates, so this is his final value. He gets nine coins. His entire hand is discarded. And now for the delivery. He cannot go to Albuquerque because that would have been ten, so he can deliver to Santa Fe. It also doesn't cost him anything because his, the note of his engine is farther than the cross. He decides to use this marker. And then since he has placed markers on both sides of this 
icon here, he gets to pick an objective card. And he says pick this one. And of course, he's moved back down here. And then he draws back up to four. And I just realized that Red had one permanent certificate, so he would actually get one dollar more. Blue moves into Kansas City. He decides to put out this tile, the engineer, and the cowboy. He has a total of eight, and he decides to add both his certificates. So he gets 10 coins. His hand is discarded. He picks up this disc. It can be a black one, because Albuquerque is black. So now his movement has increased to five, and he also gets three coins. Then he moves down here, and we replenish. Yellow puts out this tile. Craftsman. And an engineer. He has his hand of seven, eight with his certificate. And then he decides to use this disc in Santa Fe. Delivery costs are fine. And he decides to pick up this objective. He moves down here, we replenish, and of course he draws back up to four. Red moves over here, takes one certificate, and then advances his engine by one. Blue moves over here as well. He decides to take an objective, this one, and then he gets to advance his engine by two spaces. Yellow moves over here, decides to pick up this objective. He gets to advance his engine by one. He decides to double this station. He decides to upgrade it and to place this mark. And then he can also install a station master. And he decides to use this cowboy. As an immediate benefit, he gets to pick up either a hazard tile or a TP tile. He decides to go for a hazard tile. And this one is one of the most big two points. That's three points for every pair of objectives in the objective area. So that he played, they don't necessarily have to be fulfilled. Red moves over here, gets to advance another space. And for his double auxiliary action, he simply takes two coins. Blue moves over here as well. He decided to simply move two ahead and not stop at the station. And then he simply takes a single coin because he still hasn't unlocked a proper double action yet. And finally yellow joins them, moves his engine up one, and also decides to take two coins. Red moves onto his private building, he gets this card one to move his engine. And then a two to get three dollars. Blue can move up five spaces. He actually decides to move only two up here. He decides to pay two to move his engine by two spaces. This time he decides to go over here and upgrade the station. That'll cost him six. But he gets to place a black disc. And he decides to go with this one, which will increase his hand size up to five. But it'll cost him another five, which he still has. And then he decides to install his engineer as a station master. So he gets one permanent certificate, and every two hazard tiles will be worth three points at the end of the game, which works together nicely with this objective. And then for his auxiliary action, he decides to draw one card, and then discard one. And then at the end of the turn, he gets to draw up to his new hand size of five. Yellow also moves two spaces. He decides to trade with the Indians. Picks up this tile and gets two dollars in the process. And then for his auxiliary reaction, he decides to take two dollars. Red moves over here, also decides to trade with the Indians, which still gives him one coin. And then for his double auxiliary reaction, he decides to draw two cards and then discard two. Blue goes down here. First he discards a black Angus for two coins, which is barely enough to get him something on the cattle market. He has two cowboys, 
So you can use this action to get a 3 for 3. Liano moves down here. He doesn't sell anything. He has one cowboy. And so it costs him 12 to obtain a 4. Red moves over here. He can sell a Black Angus. And since he has two cowboys, a 5 will cost him 12. So he can afford one. Blue moves over here and discards two to get four dollars. But unfortunately, that's not enough to pick up a hazard tile for seven. Yellow moves over here and decides to simply take an auxiliary action and take one dollar before he starts to move. Red plays this objective card in his area, so he gets to draw three cards and then discard three. And then he decides to move one, two spaces up here. He doesn't have a green card to discard, so he gets to build a building. He only has one craftsman and both of his one buildings are already built, so he has to upgrade. He decides to pick this one, replace this one down here. And so he only has to pay the difference, that is two coins. The blue player moves over here, decides to give up a green tool to get two coins. Then he can build a building, this one for two, and he decides to put it here. And down here it doesn't make that much sense because the interesting pass is the one down here, so he actually decides to put it up here. Yellow moves over here, also gives up a green tool, has two craftsmen so he can actually build this one. It's not relevant for now, but just as a note, since he has one hazard tile and two buildings, he has now fulfilled this starting objective and he'll get the three points at the end of the game. Red moves over here, he gets to collect two points for each of his buildings in a wood, so two, four. Blue moves over here, he can give up a grey one to move his engine up once he does that. And he can also give up another green two for three, and he refills back to five. Yellow decides to stop at Blue's building, it doesn't cost him anything. He decides to perform a single auxiliary reaction. He draws a card and then he'll discard one. Red moves over here. He decides to give up a white two to get two. Then he wants to get a cowboy for five. And then he can get another character, but it costs him two more. And he actually decides to get another cowboy for seven. Now, since he plays the character here, he'll get to do this bonus action which is removing a hazard tile, and this has to take this one. Blue moves down here, also gives up a 2, then he decides to get an engineer for 6, and he can discard a grey one to get one temporary certificate. Yellow simply decides to perform an auxiliary action, so he draws a card, and he'll also discard one. Red decides to make a little stop over at Yellow's building. He'll have to pay him one, but then Red can draw a card and discard. Blue decides to move to Kansas City. So first he selects this hazard tile, puts it over here. Then he puts a cowboy in the job market. Then he puts an engineer, a uh, craftsman in the job market. And since we crossed this little space, we'll refill the cattle market and the three player game we'll refill it up to 10. So we have to reveal 9 more cards. And here we are. Then blue reveals his hand. He's got 5 different colored cards, so that's a total of 11. Plus his permanent certificate is 12, so he decides to keep this one. And with that he can deliver to El Paso. And since he can choose a black disc, he decides to pick this one, so now his hand limit is up to 6. But he has to pay 5 coins. And since his engine's up here, he doesn't have to pay any additional cost. And then of course he moves down here and we refill the forecast of four side spaces. And then of course his entire hand is discarded and he draws back up to six. Yellow moves over to his own building. He can't afford this action, so he could simply move out to Kansas, but that doesn't make any sense. So he decides to once more perform a single auxiliary action. He draws his final card and then he gets to discard one. Red moves to Kansas City. He decides to put the Tippy in play, as well as the Cowboy. And yet another Tippy. Then he has 10, plus his permanent certificate is 11. He decides to leave this one alone, so he gets 11. With that he can pick 
this marker delivered to Albuquerque. I think this one actually costs him five, as we've seen before. He resets down here and we'll refill the spaces. Blue moves over here. He decides to pick up an objective, this one. And then he gets to advance his engine by two spaces. Yellow moves to Kansas City. He decides to place down this hazard. An engineer, and a craftsman. Then he also has 10. So he also decides to use this token, pay five, and put in another kirk. And he also doesn't have to pay any transport costs. All of this is discarded. He moves down here. Red moves over here. He decides to pick up this objective. He gets to advance his engine by one space. He decides to not go to the station on here, but instead move over here. Blue moves over here. Gets to advance his engine two spaces. And then he can take a double oxy reaction, which in his case means to take one dollar. Yellow decides to take the certificate. And then he also gets to advance his engine by one. Red moves over here, gets to advance his engine one space. Then he gets to take a double oxy reaction, although he only wants to take a single one. This one down here. He has to move his engine backwards one space, but then he may remove one of his hand cards from the game. So he moves back one space to the turnout space, he'll upgrade this in a second, and then he'll pick one of his hand cards and remove it from the game entirely. Then he can pay four dollars, take this disc, upgrade the station, he can also install a station master, so he takes one of his cowboys, puts him there, and he gets another two dollars. Blue decides to move two spaces, he doesn't have to stop here, he doesn't have to pay anything, then he picks up a tippy tile, so he gets two coins. And then he can perform a double auxiliary action, so he simply takes another coin. Yellow decides to move down here to get to his own building. He'll have to pay one dollar to the bank because of this black hand here. But then he's on his own building, so he can perform a double auxiliary reaction. He decides to take two coins. He also gets to perform this risk action. Risk action because it's risky to build on this path because there could be hazards. So he gets to discard one gray card to get a certificate in two dollars. And then he gets to advance one more space and take the action on that building. So his engine is advanced by one. And he can get another two dollars. Red moves one space on his own building. He collects two coins. Gets to move one more space. Here he collects a tippy and consequently one coin. And another two. Blue moves down here. This card's a black card. He can go to the cattle market. Here's two cowboys. And with two cowboys he can get a 5 for 12. Picks the one with the 7 victory points, of course. Yellow skips over Red's building. Moves up here. He does not want to pick up a tippy. So it says pay 2 to move his engine to space number 16. And then he picks up two coins. Red moves down here as well. He can discard a black 2 to get two coins. Then he has three cowboys. And for that he can get a 4 for 6. Blue moves one space ahead. He decides to discard two cards for the same color. Get 4 coins. And then he can remove a hazard tile for 7. And he decides to grab this one over here. Clear from 4 points. And also it's his second one. So this objective is now completed. Yellow moves over here. He does not discard black 2. He only has one cowboy. So he decides to get a blue 3 for 6. Red can move a maximum of three spaces and he decides to do that by going one, two. He has to stop and pay one dollar to the bank because, well, it's a black hand. And then moves on to three over here. He could have gone this path over the blue player's building, but there's a green hand. And for that, he would have had to pay two. Even more, he would have needed to give those two dollars to the blue player. This stop is not ideal for him. Um, we'll see in a second why that is. And he simply decides to discard a green card for two. But since he only has one craftsman, he decides not to build a building. Blue simply moves on to his own building and decides to collect two dollars. Yellow moves over here, discards two cards of the same kind to get four dollars. 
but it doesn't want to pick up a hazard tile. Red simply moves one space down here onto his building. He'll get four coins. Blue moves over here, discards a green too. He only has one craftsman as well, but he decides to upgrade this building into this one. So he has to pay two. Yellow moves this way as well, so he has to pay one dollar. He discards the green too to get two more. He has two craftsmen, but he doesn't have any two buildings anymore, so he could either upgrade one of the existing ones or build a new one. He decides to build a new one and he decides to put it into the forest up here. And so he has to pay two. Red moves over here, discards white too. Then he first hires a cowboy for six. He gets the remover as a tile, he takes this one. And then he hires this engineer, it costs him two more, so eight. So he's pretty broke. And then he can discard a one to get one certificate. Blue moves over here to his own building. He first decides to discard a one to move his engine at one space. Now we could take the fork and upgrade the station, however, that would cost him eight, which he doesn't have, so he simply moves ahead. And then he can discard a green two for three. Before doing his movement, Yellow decides to play this objective card. It'll be a bit tough to play the marker at the San Francisco station, but he needs this effect now, so he can now perform a double auxiliary action. He decides to draw two cards and then discard two. And then he moves to Blue's building to perform an auxiliary action and draw and discard yet another card. And then he draws back to five. Red could go to Kansas City, but he has a very bad hand to actually do that. So he decides to stop at the yellow's building first. He has to pay one dollar, but then he can perform one auxiliary action and decides to move his engine one space backwards and move a one entirely from the game. And then of course he redraws. Blue moves over here. First he discards a white two for two dollars. Then he hires this engineer up here for six, and then by putting him here, he triggers this bonus action where he can discard a one for two. Yellow moves over here as well, doesn't discard a two, but he decides to hire this cowboy for seven. Red has to go to Kansas City. He decides to place this flat tile down here, the engineer into the top. It, as well as another engineer. Then he reveals his hand. So the two is a double. We're looking at a value of 11. He has two certificates, so he decides to spend one to make that a 12. Wait a second, I keep forgetting his permanent certificate. He doesn't have to spend one. And for 12 he can deliver to El Paso. And he decides to place this disc. Cost him five, but his hand limit will now also be six. Before doing anything else on his turn, Blue first decides to play this objective, so he gets to draw three cards and then discard three. Then he decides to move to Yellow's building, pay one to draw yet another card and discard one, but first we have to reshuffle. Yellow does not go to his own building, but directed to Kansas City. He decides to play Spitippi. The cowboy and the engineer. He has the best hand he could have hoped for, 14. However, he also decides to take this dex that costs him five and only quote unquote deliver to the parcel. And then of course he starts all over again. Red decides to take one certificate and then move his engine to his bases. Blue moves to Kansas City, places a tippy, places a cowboy and a craftsman. That triggers a refill of the cattle market. We have seven cards in the market, so we need another three. And then blue release his hand. The three is unfortunately a double, so we're only looking at 12. We have one permanent certificate and one temporary one. That's 14. And he decides to take this disc and put it into San Diego. Yellow plays an objective. To get two dollars, then he gets one certificate and 
can move this engine by one space. He decides to take the turnabout and upgrade the station. That costs him six. And he decides to place this marker. Red moves over here. So he gets the fastest engine by two spaces. And then as his double auxiliary reaction, he simply decides to take two dollars. Blue takes a certificate and gets to move his engine in three spaces. Yellow decides to move one, two, three steps onto his own building. He has to pay three coins in the process. Then he can take a double auxiliary reaction, so he takes two coins back. He can take the risk action, so he will discard a one, gets a certificate and another two coins. So then he can move one space to this building. He gets advanced his engine by one space. And take another auxiliary reaction, and he decides to take another two coins. Red moves one space onto his own building. He decides to pick up two coins and move along. Here he can pick up any one tippy tile. He decides to take the blue one and only get one coin. Since he's looking for sets of blue and green, and now he has collected his second set. And then as this double auxiliary reaction, he decides to perform this one down here once more, so he moves back two spaces. But he gets to remove two cards from his hand from the game permanently. And he decides to remove a white two and a grey one. Blue moves one step over here, gets advanced engine. He could move up to three, but he actually decides to take this turn out and upgrade the station. He decides to take this. It'll cost him seven, but on the other hand it'll give him six points. And then as his double auxiliary reaction, he can now earn two coins back. Yellow moves one two spaces, decides to pick up this tippy tile for two, and another two. Before red moves, he decides to play yet another objective card. The bonus is to advance his engine by two spaces. Then he moves over here. He cannot discard a black two, but he can go to the cattle market and his four cowboys. And with four cowboys, he can get a five for only six dollars. So this is what he'll do. Blue moves one, two spaces up here, decides to move his engine up by two. That would cost him two. He could spend them, but then he'll get them right back. Yellow moves over to the cattle market. Discards black two for two. He has two cowboys. And he decides to pick up a blue three for three. Red moves over here, decides to discard a pair. In this case, two green twos. Gets four money but decides not to pick up a hazard tile. Blue heads over here, decides to discard black too. He gets two dollars, but he decides to not go and visit the cattle market. Yellow moves over here, discards a pair of ones, and then he decides to pick up a hazard tile, and he decides to pick up this one. So now this objective where he needs one hazard tile and two stations is also fulfilled. Red can go either through the hazard and yellow's building, or through blue building, so he decides to do that. And even more, he decides to actually stop there. He has to pay one and take a single auxiliary action. He decides to draw a card and then discard one. Blue moves over here, discards a pair of ones. He makes four bucks. He decides not to pick up a hazard tile. Yellow moves one, two spaces. He has to pay one dollar to the bank. Then he receives two dollars for each of his buildings that's in a forest, so two, four. And then by discarding a one, he can get another two dollars and move his certificate marker one space. He has one to discard, and now he has six certificates, because the last step actually means two certificates. Red moves over here, discards a green two for two. Then he can build. He only has one craftsman, so he decides to remove his two building to build this one instead. That's an increase of one, so he has to pay two. Blue moves over here, decides to pick up a hazard tile for five. Then he can advance up to two spaces, he decides to simply move over here. He discards a green two. And then since he only has one craftsman as well, he decides to upgrade this two tile. Three tile as well, so he has to pay two. Yellow moves over here. He does not discard a green two. 
Then he decides to upgrade this two building, since he has two craftsmen with a four building. And that'll cost him four. Red simply moves over here, so he can pick up four dollars. Before moving, Blue plays this objective card. He has basically already fulfilled it. He has one hazard tile in excess and he has two buildings on the board. He may draw up to three cards and then discard three. He draws two, then he reshuffles and draws the third. After discarding three cards, he moves over here, discards a one to move his engine one space, and then he discards a green two for three. Yellow stops at Blue's building and he decides to take a simple auxiliary action by drawing a card and discarding one. Red moves over here, discards a white two for two, and then from the job market he picks up this cowboy for eight. And then the second buy will cost him two more, so he decides to pick up this craftsman for five, so it will cost him seven, which is basically all he has left. Blue does pretty much the same, he moves over here, discards a white two, hires an engineer for seven. And now he unlocks a bonus action where he can hire someone and pay two less. So he can actually pick up this cowboy for seven. Yellow moves here over here as well. Discards a white two. And then he hires this craftsman for six. And then he's also too broke to perform a second hiring. Red is not too happy with his hand yet, so he decides to stop at Yellow's building and draw a card and discard one. Blue does the same. Yellow, of course, also moves on his building. First, he can discard a Yellow 3 for 10 bucks. He has one. And then, as his double auxiliary action, of course, he draws two cards to discard two. And Red moves to Kansas City. First, he decides to put down the tippy tile. Then, well, he has to put a craftsman in the shop market, as well as an engineer. Then he reveals his hand. The black two is a double, so we're looking at 14. He decides to burn all of his certificates. So we're at 17, and then with the permanent one, we're at 18. So we can actually deliver to San Francisco. That'll cost him one in transportation costs, so 17. And yes, he should have received the money before actually paying the transportation costs. Blue moves to Kansas City. He places this hazard tile. A craftsman and engineer. And then he reveals his hand. Two is a double. So we're looking at 14 as well. By burning one certificate and a permanent one, we're getting at 16. He decides to use this one, although it's a white one, and place it on Sacramento. He doesn't have to pay any transportation costs, so he's also done. Yellow moves to Kansas City. He decides to place the tippy and the craftsman and the engineer. And then he reveals his hand. He has all different cards. We're looking at a value of 16. He decides to move his certificate marker back one. That's two certificates. So we're looking at 18. Then for delivery, he decides to pick up this one. That'll give him another three. And the translation costs are not a problem. And then he also moves back to the start of the trail. Red moves here, he decides to take an objective. This one is a no-brainer because he already has a marker in San Francisco. And then he gets to advance his engine by two spaces. Blue moves over here as well. Unfortunately, all the objectives don't suit him very well at this point. So he simply decides to take a certificate. Then he gets to advance his engine. He could move up to four spaces. He decides to only move two actually to upgrade this train station. He takes this marker and it has to pay six. Yellow decides to take this objective. And then he can move his engine one space. Red moves over here, gets to advance his engine by two spaces. He decides to take the detour. Upgrade this station, that'll cost him eight. He decides to place this disc so he'll get three back. And then as his double auxiliary action, he decides to move back two spaces with his engine and remove two of his hand cards from the game, a black two and a gray one. Blue gets to advance his engine by four spaces once again. And then for his auxiliary action, he simply decides to collect 
two cards. Here Hilo decides to take the detour over the hazard tile, over to his building, so first of all he has to pay one to the bank. First of all he takes the risk action, he decides to grade one to get another two coins and move the certificate marker back down to six. For his double auxiliary action he decides to take two cards and discard two. Then he gets to move over to the next space. He can advance his engine from by one space. Leap frogging over red. And then for his next auxiliary action, he decides to once again draw two cards and discard two. Red moves to his own building. Unfortunately, he does not have a black two to discard, so he simply generates two coins because he has two engineers. Blue decides to make a stop at Red's building. He decides to perform a single auxiliary action. This one, so he pays a coin to move his engine one space, making a stop here. And then for five, he can upgrade yet another station. Yellow decides to skip this one, move up here. He decides to pick up a tippy tile, a green one, because he needs it for his objective. That generates two coins for him. And then for his double auxiliary reaction, he once more decides to draw two cards and discard two. Red decides to pick up a tippy tile on this one, so he gets one. And then he decides to draw two cards and discard two. Blue decides to spend two to move his engine forward by two, and then as an auxiliary action, he decides to pay yet another dollar to move a total of three spaces. Yellow first discards a black two for two. He has two cowboys. He could spend one of them to flip two cards, but that wouldn't do him any good because then he'd only have one cowboy left. So he decides to use both his cowboys to get a four for 12. So he takes these two fours, they'll be worth nine points. And he pays a whooping 24 cash for that. Maybe not the best use of his money, but at least he got some points. Red does not have a black two to this card, so he simply goes to the cattle market. He has five cowboys. For three, he can get two threes for five. And for two, he can get another three for three. So he'll take all these threes for eight. Blue can discard a two. And then with his three cowboys, he takes those two threes for five. Yellow decides to move ahead a little. One, two, three spaces. He has to pay one for the hazard over here. Then he collects four coins. And then for the risk action, he can discard a one. His certificate is at the bottom, it can't go any further, but he can still collect two dollars. Red discards a pair of green twos for four, but he does not pick up a hazard tile. And blue discards a pair of ones, also for four, and he also does not pick up a hazard tile. Yellow can discard a green two, and then he can build a building. He has three craftsmen, so he can build this one straight away without upgrading anything else. He decides to put it down here. And since it costs three craftsmen, he has to pay six. Red moves one two spaces. He would like to build a building. For two craftsmen, he can build this one, put it over here in the forest, and so now he has to pay four. Blue stops at his own building, but instead of doing the actions here, he decides to simply take a single auxiliary action. And he wants to move his train up ahead once more for one dollar. Yellow moves over here. This cards are white two for two. Then he hires this craftsman that costs him six. As a reward, he can may build a building, but each craftsman only costs one instead of the usual two. He has four craftsmen available. He decides to upgrade this three building to a seven. So he used four craftsmen, so he has to pay four. And then he can hire a second craftsman at a minus two. Or rather, he can hire any character, but he decides to hire another craftsman. This one usually costs five, so it now costs him seven. But he'll get the four bonus points at the end of the game. Red moves down here. He can now collect six gold. One, two, three buildings in the forest. Blue decides to move a bit ahead by moving one, two, three spaces. He has to pay one dollar to red, though. Then he can discard a one to move his engine ahead one space. We're getting closer. And then he can discard a green two for three. Yellow moves to his building, discards a three for ten bucks. And then as a double auxiliary action, he decides to draw two cards and 
Discard two. Red moves over here, discards a white two. Then he can hire someone. He picks the cowboy, it costs him ten, but it'll get him four points. And he'll also trigger this action so he can pick up another tippy. Since he gets bonus points for complete sets of blue and green tippies, and he has a known blue, he decides to pick up this one. It'll cost him one, but it's probably worth it since this is another three points. Blue moves down here as well, decides to discard a two. He then hires an engineer for five. He can discard a one to advance the certificate marker by two spaces. He then decides to hire yet another engineer. So he can hire this one for seven. He can discard another one for four coins. Yellow actually has one last action to perform because he drew his final objective card. He decides to play it. So he can advance the engine by up to two spaces. He only decides to move one though to upgrade this train station for eight. And he can place this disc, which will give him another three points later on. But then he moves to Kansas City. It probably doesn't really matter that much, but he decides to use this tile, then pick any one character. And we're close to ending the game, but it will not end on Yellow's turn. Then he only has five cards, of course, but they're all different. So we're looking at 14. Together with his six certificates, we're looking at 20. So he'll make 20 bucks. And then he can, of course, deliver to San Francisco. And it really doesn't matter which disc he takes. I'm sorry, it does matter. I guess it's better if he has unlocked this ability. I don't know whether I've mentioned this. While you can only deliver once to each station, you can deliver as many times as you want to Kansas City or San Francisco. And he doesn't have to pay any costs. And after that, he's basically done. Moves back to the end of the trail. We'll actually get another turn next round because as of now the game is not over. Red decides to make a little stop to perform one auxiliary reaction. He decides to draw one and discard one. Blue also decides to stop here, but move his engine up ahead one final time. So he pays one. And He's at the end. What happens now? First of all, he can upgrade that final train station for three, which is all he has left. And after that, he can move back his engine to any space he likes and get three dollars. Let's take those three dollars first. Now he could actually move back to one turnout space that he's able to upgrade with three dollars. And that's only these two that give him a point. The thing is, then his engine is stuck down here and he still has one final delivery to make and then he would have to pay a lot of money for transportation, so that's not worth it. Let's simply move back here. Yellow takes a flow, moves over here, decides to pick up another objective. There's another San Francisco objective and he now has two discs there, so that'll score another five points. And then he simply advances his engine by one space. Red finally moves to Kansas City as well. He decides to pick up this one, making it harder for Yellow to move along here later on. And then he's the one to actually end the game by putting another character here. He gets this token, it'll be worth two points at the end of the game. And from now on, simply no more of these character tokens are placed. Also, this was Red's last turn, but Blue and Yellow will get one final turn after that. So we'll simply continue. The five is double. So we're looking at 16, no temporary certificates, but one permanent, so 17. And of course, making a delivery to San Francisco is his best option. He also decides to take this disc. And then he's basically done. But of course, the spaces need to be refilled. As his last action, Blue moves to Kansas City. He has to pick one of these tiles and then he can't perform two, steps two and three because there's no space in the job market. He was lucky, he has more or less a perfect hand. Well, there's no four, but still they're all different. So we're looking at 17 and three is 20, 21. And well, he doesn't even have one in San Francisco yet. So of course he delivers there. That's it also for him. And finally, Yellow decides to move one, two, three spaces to his own building. 
That'll cost him three. Then he gets to advanced engine three spaces. And then he can move his engine back any number of spaces. And then make an extraordinary delivery to a city, which city number is equal or lower to the number of spaces. He must move back. He must back one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen spaces to make another delivery to San Francisco. That's the end of his turn, and thus the end of the game. Okay, so we have our scoring sheet. And let's go through all the categories first. Each five dollars are worth one point. Yellow has 23 for four points. Red has 22, so also four points. And blue has 24, so also four points. Buildings. Yellow has nine, and three is 12, and one is 13, and five is 18. Red has four, and three, and one is eight. And blue has four, and one for a total of five. Then points for deliveries. Starting with yellow, these don't give him anything. He has both these, that's six. He doesn't have any of those. And then he has three times nine for San Francisco, so that's 27 plus six is 33. For red, it looks pretty similar. He has the six for these two. And then two to San Francisco, 18 and six is 24. For blue, it's a bit different. He gets these six and these eight, that's 14, and these four is 18, and six is 24, and nine is also 33. Next up, we have the upgrade train stations. For yellow, two, and three is five, and five is ten. For red, one, two, four, nine. And then for blue, three, and 6 is 9, and 7 is 16, and 8 is 24, and 9 is once again 33. Then hazard tiles. Yellow gets 8 points, red gets 6, and blue gets 10. Next up, each player looks through the entire deck. That is the discard pile, the hand, and that raw pile and counts up all the victory points for the cattle they bought during the game because the one they started with doesn't have any victory points on them. Yellow has 1, 3, 6, 9, 12, 16, 21 points. Red has 2, 5, 8, 11, 14, 19, 25, 32. And blue has 1, 2, 4, 6, 9, 16. Next up, each player looks through the entire deck whether they still have any objective cards in there. If they do, they can decide to play them to the area. They don't get the immediate effect. And after that, they have to see which ones are fulfilled and which ones aren't. First of all, Yellow has one objective card still in his deck. He decides to play it. He needs one disc in San Francisco. He needs another disc in San Francisco. He has both of them, so we have 10 points. Then he needs at least two upgraded stations. He has three plus one has a tile. Another three points, we're at 13. Then he has to have two houses. He has a total of four plus another has a tile. Fulfilled, so we're looking at 16. Then he needs another two houses, but since he has four, he still has those plus two green tippy tiles. So that's also fulfilled. So we're looking at a total of 21 points from objectives for yellow. Red also has another card to play. Then he needs a 3, a 4 and a 5, which he has. A 5 and has a tile. There's another 5, a 2 has a tile. A 3, a 4 and a building. He has a 3 and a 4 and he also has 3 buildings. So this one's fulfilled as well. One mark in San Francisco. Check. One upgraded station. Yes, check. Plus a blue and a green tippy tile. Yes. So three and five is eight. Eleven, fourteen, nineteen for red. Blue needs two buildings and one has a tile. Yes, two buildings. Then a blue tippy plus another two has a tiles. And then three threes, an upgraded station. He has lots of upgraded stations and three threes of any color. And that's a total of 
10. Then the stage master tiles. Yellow has one where he gets three points for each two objectives in his objective area, no matter whether they're fulfilled or not. He has five objectives, so that's six points. Red gets three points for each set of blue and green tippy tiles. He has three sets, so that's nine points. And then one for each character, including the ones that are printed on. So he gets another 10 points for a total of 19 from Station Master tiles. Blue gets three for each set of two hazard tiles. He only has three, unfortunately, so that's only three points. Then characters. If you have a character in the fifth or sixth column, you get four points. So yellow gets four points. Red gets eight. And blue also gets eight because of all his engineers. Then there's three points for those players that have this disc unlocked. That's all of them. So basically everybody gets three points. And then finally he ever has the shop market token. That's red. Gets two points. And then let's see where we stand. Okay, so I'd say this is a very close game. Blue has 125, yellow has 128, and red has 134, making him the overall winner. And that was one full three-player game of Great Western Trail. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this walkthrough of Great Western Trail. Hopefully you now know how the game is played, if you haven't already learned that in the past two years. First of all, let me talk about well, the way I played all the players and the endgame scores. I would argue that the endgame scores were not really high, but maybe higher than average. And that is mainly, I think, because the players really took it slow. More or less, everybody stopped at every possible point on the map, taking many actions. And since everybody did that, there was actually no need for anybody to, to rush ahead or to catch up. And so everybody basically had the time or could afford to do all those small actions. If a player decides to rush ahead, then the others either have to ignore it and hope that by doing the right actions at a slower pace that they somehow catch up, or they have to start rushing as well. This is why the two upgrades with the extra movement didn't make any difference in this game. There are a lot of different strategies that you could use to approach this game. Three obvious ones would be to specialize in each of the three workers which I called characters, by the way, in the video, the official Tempus workers. And while these are probably all valid choices, depending on how the rest of the game goes, and there are, of course, many different strategies in between. The replayability of this game is enormous. You have the way that the neutral buildings are set up, the different combinations of private buildings, station master tiles at different stations, different seating of the board in each game. And I think it has a rather large impact on how you first one or two cycles basically from the start to Kansas City will go. So for example in the beginners game where you put the neutral tiles in a specific order the one where you can get a new worker comes pretty early and depending on which kind of worker you'll get the rest of this first cycle will be different because you will already be able to use your new worker for different effect. You get to buy more cows, you get maybe to build another building than the other players, or maybe you get to advance your engine a little further. And in this game, the building with the characters came rather late. So basically, during the first cycle, the players, at least it seemed this way, did not have that many options to diversify. So it seems, and I guess this holds true for every well-designed game, you have to read the board, plan accordingly, and make the right decisions based on what you see and not try to apply the same procedure every play. Also, depending on which kind of private buildings the players have available, there can be a lot of blocking, trying to slow the opponents down by placing lots of buildings with the black or green hand symbols. In the game I just showed you, that barely didn't happen. I guess there weren't just that many buildings that had either hand symbol. The players didn't use them. And I guess that's already it. So as always, Thanks for watching, have fun playing, and until next time, bye-bye.